Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife. And just like so many other people, I am currently restricted to my local area. But that doesn't mean that there's no wildlife to be found. Recently there's been really heavy snowfall and that means the birds that are usually shy and timid are forced to come out into the open and make themselves known. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to see some. I live in the city of Norwich in Norfolk and today I'll be following the riverside path heading west away from the city. It wasn't long before I got to see the first winter migrant bird. This is a red wing. They are close relatives of blackbirds and song thrushes, but unlike those species, red wings only breed in very small numbers in this country. They mainly breed in Russia, Scandinavia and Iceland, but migrate to the UK around October to spend their winters on our farmlands and in our woodlands. During the spring and summer, they eat insects, worms and other invertebrates, but whilst wintering in the UK, their diet consists mainly of berries. Slightly further down the path was a bird that is becoming ever more common in Norfolk and the UK as a whole, the ring-necked parakeet. These birds have colonised almost all of the country now as a result of both deliberate and accidental releases. Unfortunately, as is almost always the case when a new species comes into an environment, it causes issues for those that are already there. Ring-necked parakeets may compete with native birds for food one of their biggest impacts is their competition with some species for nesting holes. Whilst watching the parakeet, I saw one of the birds that is most susceptible to competition with them, the great spotted woodpecker. These are the most common of the three species of woodpecker found in the UK, along with the lesser spotted and the green woodpecker. Throughout the late winter, they are most noticeable when they announce their presence and claim their territories by drumming on dead or hollow tree branches. I left them to it and carried on down the riverside path, passing by the beautiful snow and ice covered Wensome Local Nature Reserve. As I did, I noticed a small brown bird hurrying up the trunk of a tree. This is an aptly named tree creeper and this is the first time that I've seen one in this area. With their brilliant camouflage and small size, you can't blame me for overlooking them in the past. Tree creepers are especially adapted to clinging onto and walking up vertical and even overhanging branches and use their narrow pointed beaks to pry insects and invertebrates out from the cracks within the bark. From one small bird to another, slightly further up the path was an evergreen holly bush and jumping hurriedly from branch to branch and leaf to leaf was a gold crest, the smallest bird in the country. They measure 9 centimetres from head to tail and weigh just 5.5 grams. This is about the same as a 20 pence coin. If you've got good eyes, you might be able to spot the yellow Mohican that gives this bird its name. Being so small, they have to continuously search for food to fight off starvation. High in the branches above was another reason for the small birds to keep on the move, a predatory kestrel. Kestrels are famous for their habit of hovering on the wing and looking out for prey below, but a high perch gives almost the same view but costs far less energy. In reality, small birds make up a very small portion of their diet. They usually hunt for voles, insects and worms, and will even take common lizards if they can catch them. This is the first time I've seen a kestrel along this route, but she has been spotted there a few times since my visit. I carried on walking further out of the city, where the river runs alongside a large open flood meadow. The taller trees here stand out as landmarks, something the parakeets seem to have fully taken advantage of. I was first told about parakeets in Norwich a couple of years ago when there were around 10 birds, but like so many other places in the country, their numbers here do seem to be rising. Behind the tree, the flooded 
and now frozen meadows provided sanctuary for several species of wading bird. The first that I noticed was this common snipe. These medium sized mottled brown birds have long straight bills which are used for probing beneath the water, mud and in this case ice in search of food. This is mainly invertebrates and worms which the bird swallows whole. Around 80,000 pairs of snipe breed in the UK and this is bolstered by nearly a million that migrate here for the winter from mainland Europe. Snipe weren't the only big billed birds out on the meadow, there was also a small group of curlew. These are the largest wading birds in Europe and used to be a very common sight in the UK. Unfortunately, this isn't so much the case anymore. Curlew have faced massive declines, especially in the southern part of the country where it's now feared they might actually go extinct as a breeding bird. Changes in farming techniques and high levels of nest predation have both been listed as reasons for the curlew's demise, but hope is not lost. There are captive rearing programs and predation prevention schemes springing up across the country to try to help them. Amongst the curlew and the snipe, there was another striking bird on the meadows, the lapwing. From a distance, lapwings look black and white, but if you get a close view, their backs and wings are an iridescent green. They also have another distinctive marking. If you look closely here, you might just be able to make out that they have a long crest of feathers sticking out of the back of their heads. The wind had started to get too strong to film in, but I was more than happy with how much wildlife I'd managed to film, so I called it a day and headed back to where the walk had begun. So after doing a massive loop, I'm almost back to where I started this morning. But what a fantastic day watching wildlife that was. I can't believe I've seen so many species just a short walk from my home. When I started making videos for a shot of wildlife, I really wanted to show people that you didn't have to go way out into the country to enjoy the amazing nature of the UK. And today, I proved that point. Now if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these other two British wildlife videos, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.